Right. Trying to lock up the. Uh... Hey, welcome, guys. It's time for Bollocks Talks and Tangents. Me and I'm sorry, we caught Lenny mid sentence there. <laughs> just most of the time. giving us a count. Most of the time, <laughs> Lenny just keeps going. He keeps going, but I I was listening to you, Amanda. Uh, I got you. It's Thursday night. It's six thirty four. Lenny, cheers, sir. Chindan. We got Amanda in the booth. Blake's Yay. off. Hey, Blake's off doing some sports. Well, that, soccer, can, basketball, some Canadian something, sport some, with a stick. Something. Sa- oh, lacrosse. Yeah. Lacra- Very Jim Brown of them. Lacrosse or something. Okay. I don't even know All what right. that is. It's, <laughs> it's, it, I know it was created by Indians. Hey, I'm from Long Island, man. Lacrosse is big business. Yeah, yeah it is. You, you got a lot of Indians. I'm from, I went to Cornell. Native Americans, Lacrosse, American, lacrosse is even bigger business. Yeah. yeah. Are you even allowed to say Indians yeah. anymore? Depends well, on who you you're can. talking about. Right. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> what, what was what was the topic we had over there? What uh, <laughs> yeah. what were can't do anymore or whatever? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't make them like they used they to. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> so, but cheers. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We got a fun show. We're doing uh, state nicknames, some of the origins. We got some word origins. Mm-hmm. Lenny and I, I are we're drinking some moonshine. Ooh, baby. White lightning. And it's not even it's not even dark out. Yeah. Right. White lightning. Ooh, we should save some of this for the eclipse that I'm not going to see. Oh. <laughs> I still might go. You yeah, just never I'm know. tempted. I know. I'm tempted. Yeah, I got a big car. You, you see, can load you up know. in the back. Fair enough. Um, but um, I tell you what, we got a fun show. I got pages and pages of stuff we'll never get to. Lenny, you have pages and pages. I got front and uh, back. Amanda just found out like an, uh, 40 minutes ago what the topic was. So. <laughs> I got the internet. <laughs> yeah, you got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you have access. You probably are going to be quicker on the information than we are. <laughs> Which explains um, how Blake always beats me in the quizzes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, we, all, we all know how it happens. We all know how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but it. <laughs> but if you're out there, if you're out there watching, uh, is your TV okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, no, no, no blood in my screen. Okay, okay. yeah. The black lung. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ho- you know, I was, a coal, Hol- I was a coal miner's daughter. Why I got I Doc Holiday over here hosting <laughs> the show with me. <laughs> just don't call, just don't call me Lunger, and we'll be okay. <laughs> I'll be. You know that line was completely um, wrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was supposed to be Huckle Bearer, right? Like a Paul Bearer, right? And it came out as Huckle Berry, right? So, completely wrong in the movie. But uh, iconic. Yes, yeah, exactly. But iconic. Yep. He was very good in that role, um, poor Diane Val. But you know what? we got to go over. we got to go over our amazing sponsors. I'm wearing Please. one of our sponsor shirts today. we got very shirts nice. from our sponsors nice. today. Nice. I'll Lenny, wear with pride. Lenny, uh, I got you a schmedium. Thank you very much. So I will you, I just, it's, it's a sausage skin, but that's yeah, okay. I mean, you're going to have a halter top next week, so Ooh. people know to tune in. <laughs> People know to tune in. Um, all right. When we're talking about St. Augustine Distillery and City Gate Spirits, um, today we are drinking the White Lightning from City Gate Spirits. And let me tell you, I've had, I probably have more moonshine than a lot of other people that I know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's why my beard's so white. Um, and this is one of the smoother It's very nice. Moonshines. I, I don't know if my, uh, my grandfather would consider this a moonshine. But it's one of the smoother moonshines than than uh, I've ever had. And, and it's funny because you know, moonshine to you Southerners is grappa to us Italians. Mm. You know, my grand grappa, yeah, okay, yeah. My grandfather used to to make grappa, and all that is is you take after you make your wine, you take the skins and the stems and the twigs, and you you take all that must from the mm-hmm. wine, mm-hmm. and you distill that, and that's where you get your grappa, and you're mm. talking your white lightning there. Yeah. So mm. our, ours is made usually with uh with the water from the creek. Crick, crick. I don't like think in I'm, my neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's down there near the crick, mm-hmm. and uh, it's mostly with corn mash. Mm-hmm. So, um, but this not is not from the water really in those good. footpaths. This is for for uh, hundred proof, fifty percent alcohol by volume. This is very smooth. I, 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 there's no burn to it no, whatsoever, no, which is and, nice. And I, I and I. I I, I did the baby version, put some ice in it because I have to drive myself home. I know. So I'm only having one. To, That's all. To Blake and Rebecca, who's always worried about me. I'm only having one. <laughs> um, but uh, our sponsors, these guys do an amazing job. They have great flavors. Um, you know, CityGate Spirits, uh, to me, uh, I enjoy their tasting tour because mm-hmm. it's such a wide variety of different flavors. You're going to get hit all at once. Um, but St. Augustine uh, Distillery, I don't know if you saw that. They sent I did. They sent a bottle of the Saint. I did. Which is one of my favorite ones. They sent that to us. It's not. Uh, it's not in the box anymore. Oh, it's not. In the- <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make it. All right. I was saying. I don't know. I don't know gonna, how it got in my bag, but you know. I was going to say we're probably going to drink that in two weeks when I get back. I know it's but, still there. All right. I'll save um, it for here. But you guys do an amazing job. We appreciate you every day, and thank you for our shirts. Um, and, and for being a big part in a, a big part of the community and and good community partners too, these guys. And I don't know if you can see this. 
but it's got a little flag on the sleeve there. Nice. I don't, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. All right. Flat and then the back is even cooler. Woo-hoo. Nice. So I, I, Here at Troy's Haberdashery, you can get yours. We take all <laughs> sizes, and we take Master Visa, Discover, and Cash Money, if you still have that. Haberdashery. Lovely. Haberdashery, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and it was Harry Truman. I, I can tell you this. You guys, uh, when I come back in two weeks, I'm going to look like a different man. The beard's You're going coming, snorkeling. The beard's coming off. Baby, nice. It's coming off. I mean, do you remember seeing me without my beard? I, yeah, I shaved it so off last year about last this year. time. Yeah. For yeah. sure, yeah. I, well, I met you beardless. Oh, did you? And so when Clay posted pictures and like, oh, I'm hanging out with my friend Troy, I had no idea who you were <laughs> the beard. until we ran into you at Prohibition Kitchen oh, one night. And I was like, oh, I know you. Yeah. You oh, just yeah. Have, you just have pubes on your face now. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like you saying that because they get stuck in my they get stuck in my mouth a lot, a little too much. Oy, so, oy, oy. I'm gonna go with her being an anti beard person. Fine, yeah. <laughs> Just uh, you know, uh, once again, I'm so behaving myself. <laughs> yep. Um, all right, the other other one. Uh, they had a great weekend. Wonderful, wonderful crew. Oh my Me goodness. Hands. Talk about them, Lenny. Brag first, about them. First of all. Um, we have every intention of trying to get there for St. Patrick's Day, but when I saw the lines trying to get in the side door and the front door, we just passed on it and kept going um, because I will catch up with them during the week when they have a little yeah. bit more space. Yeah. But they just, they were nonstop for three days over the weekend for St. Patrick's Day. I mean, they built to it Friday, Saturday, Sunday was the, the official day. Bagpipes out in front. I mean, they do, they, they they do, do their right. Irish well. They really do. They do it right. For nice sure. people. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got a little strategy going that I'm going to swing by there probably Monday when my friend Caleb is behind the bar. And I think we're going to get six or seven um, key lime pies to go. Oh. And when I call them key lime pies, it's a little deceiving because um, it's more like a, a – I keep calling it a, a, a key lime timbal because they make them in soup cups. And then they unmold them. And it's a brilliant way of doing it. Did you say Tim's Balls? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Okay. Which brings us back to the pubes. So okay, we got to be yeah. careful now about that. I was going to exactly. say, where is yeah, this know. show going? Well, <laughs> I and, we and, and again, I'm behaving. And again, I'm behaving. I thought we were but, talking about nicknames. So, well, you know, I don't know what Tim calls his balls, yeah. but still. Um, you know. Um, but, yeah, you know, the food is great. And, and I'm actually thinking of trying the curry, you know, because I'm really typecast when I go there. But I think I'm going to try the chicken curry at your behest. Mm. So I love their chicken you know, curry. Well, I'm going to give it a whirl. So I'm I, yeah. I'm I'm a person. I love a good curry. Yeah, you know, and in a hurry, I, curry in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Don't you don't you know, um, Amanda? Are you a curry person, or you're either a curry person or you're not? I'm not. I've only had a few curries. I've I've enjoyed the ones that I've had. There is that like aroma to it that I have to kind of get past, but uh, I've enjoyed the curries. I've well, had. it's interesting you say that because I grew up, and every now and again, much to my father's displeasure, my mother would make you know like chicken a la king and she put curry powder into it now when you grow up in america in the 1960s um curry powder was in a jar and it was brown and it's the the aroma that you're talking about is very very recognizable Mm -hmm. and that was the standard astringent curry powder Mm -hmm. well you know you you get a little bit more sophisticated you get a little bit more worldly and you know there's indian curries of which there's you know tons of yeah and then there's thai curries Mm -hmm. and they're completely different you know because i think that curry is just an amalgamation of spices and seasonings all put together into whatever you're going to season your dish with Mm -hmm. and i do a lot of dishes at home with um with thai curries Mm -hmm. yeah you know the red yellow green a little bit of coconut milk Mm -hmm. put over chicken put it over shrimp great dinner yeah, yeah, Thai see, curries see, are delicious. Yeah, see, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, and completely I, different. I like from what you and I are talking about growing yeah. up with that. I like, I like recognizable both. flavor. Yeah, yeah, I like both, but I, yeah. I am, I, you know, with the the group of friends that I have. Yes, and, yes. and my source of your food, associates. Yes, my indeed. source and my associates of food. I get some of the best. I'm sure best Indian food you can ever mm-hmm. like. When hurricanes hit, I'm so happy because. <laughs> Because well, we, now we, we know who to blame. We <laughs> we eat Indian food. We all go to the same hotel. Okay, and we eat so good. The ladies, because they, they're afraid everything's going to spoil their house, they bring it with them. Right, and they just cook everything. Nice. And we just I, I put on four or five pounds in like five days oh, at, at a, a okay. hurricane party. 
Nice. So play left, right, center all night long. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, all right. Amanda, we'll bring singles and we'll show up. Yeah. Nice. That <laughs> sounds what, like fun. We're, we're inviting ourselves to the next hurricane yeah. party. Uh, that's it. So it's it's always a fun time. All right. Also a fun time, but not so much a fun time. It's doing taxes. <laughs> not I really so got to get my stuff together. All right. Uh. And and my guys, A Bear Kresge and Associates, they're the best in the game. Uh, you think you're going to save money? You're not. You yeah. think you're going to do it tomorrow? You're probably not. Yeah. All right. But send it, get it together, get it to these guys, Aber Kresge and Associates. They'll take care of you and make sure you're getting the most out of your money that you worked so hard to get. All right. St. Augustine Pirate Museum, just beautiful people over there. Saw Cindy uh, at the Tom Segura. Uh, oh, okay. Show she she was uh, she was there her and John and just beautiful people uh, love what they're doing for the community they have um, the Bull and Crown they have mm-hmm. the uh, Colonial Oak um, they just do is so, a very good band at the they, Colonial Oak tonight yeah they do so much they have great bands yeah. at the Colonial Oak um, but at the Pirate Museum they have over eight hundred artifacts and to me it's the most underrated museum. In St. Augustine. And and it's funny because you keep bringing up the fact that every time you go, you see or learn something mm-hmm. different. You know, and we've talked a lot about over the last, you know, three or four months about pirate um, documentaries and going to the museum and seeing stuff and going back and learning new things. Well, I just ended up doing a documentary on Captain, Captain Kidd's treasure, mm-hmm. which could be on St. Augustine Beach or in the Carolinas or in the Caribbean yeah. or, or in, in Madagascar. So you pay your money, you take your chances. Mm-hmm. Nobody's found it and may never do it. But now i got to go back there and see cross-reference it Captain could, Kidd with the museum. Could be in my front yard. I live close enough to the bay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll start digging tomorrow. Especially right. during hurricanes, the bay comes to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really, really does. It surrounds me. All right, uh, Kaiser's Deli and Market, I think Blake ate there today. Excellent. Um, just wonderful food. They're doing breakfast now. Kurt, yep. you're doing an amazing job. So proud of you. You worked hard to get this open, yep. and you're crushing it. Yep. And appreciate you being a part of the show. And try the bollocks. Try Sandwich the bollocks. Sandwich named after this show. Try the bollocks. It ain't bad. All right. I, I, I like it. It's, it's my cold. Some might it's say my, good. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my cold sandwich go-to, and yeah. uh, either the uh, the spike, the Daddle Reuben, or the Rolly. The Rolly, yeah. The Rolly is my yeah. uh, my hot go-to. Yeah. All right, uh, Coquina Coast Realty. These guys yeah. know their stuff. No, it's actually this guy knows his stuff. <laughs> Small, well, tight, <laughs> tightly run organization. <laughs> actually, my my partner. Uh, TJ was just on the phone with me. You were, okay. you were in here when I was talking to him. Coquina Coast Realty, give me a call. I can help you with uh, commercial, residential. You're looking to sell, looking to buy. You have friends coming in town. I can help them through the process. And the good thing is, is Coquina Coast Realty works very closely with Walking Man Consulting. Ooh. So if you want to develop, I can take you from development to selling your property and do a full flip with you. And my number is 904-669-7901. 904-669-7901. I still have an apartment available coming open on April 15th. Nice. And I have uh, a three-bedroom house available coming open also in middle, mid-April hmm. uh, for rental properties. Okay. And, and just so Ooh, you know, they're not cheap. Here well. We, Every, everyone goes, oh, do you have anything cheap? No, I don't. Not in this day and age. No, there's nothing cheap right. in St. Augustine. So, But gas but, just dropped 30 cents a gallon, so there's that. Yeah, yeah. It dropped <sighs> It dropped 30 cents? All of a sudden, um, on the island, the, well, sur- it, it the Circle K... it shot up last week. I know, but the Circle K opposite the pier mm-hmm. went from 359 to 319 in the span of two days. T- today it was 319? 319 on my way to work, yeah. What? We do a gas Couldn't report every day. I didn't see anything that low. Well, wow. by the way, that Circle K, um, the the shell opposite the pier, that kind of changes by the hour. Okay. Because it, it starts at 319, and then you, you go, and it's 329, you go back again, and it's 319. I think one of the clerks there was just trying to, it, trying to up their game a little bit. I'll, I'll make a prediction. By November... It'll be under three dollars an uh, a gallon. Well, it let, always drops right before the presidential election, mm. just so they can say, "When I went out, it was this low." Yep. And they all do it, you yeah. know. Yep. Obama did it. Trump did it. Everybody before them did it, and I guarantee you, Biden's going to do it. And you know what? The sheeples of America believe it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, see what <laughs> you know? he did, and they only believe that moment. Right. They forget all right. the others. Right. So that's go it. figure. Yep. All right, it's time for the show. Baby, baby. All right, you got a word origin. I do. I have a word origin. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do my word or- origin first. Fine. Because both of our word origins start with the same first syllable. Correct. Different okay. letters. Right. And I'm going to do Knickerbocker. 
a Knickerbocker. All right. Yeah. You think of you think of the Knickerbockers. You think of the New York Knicks. I do, and they're actually competitive. All right. You have any idea where the Knickerbocker name came from? The Dutch. I'm going right to the Dutch. It is Dutch. I'm That's giving it. you that. It is Dutch. Fine. I'll I'll, I'll cash you're, out here. You're gonna you're gonna <laughs> stop on that one. All right. So it is it is Dutch. I'm giving you that one. You got that much. All right. Uh, and it's considered descendants of the Dutch settlers in New York in 1831. Now the That's Dutch later goes than I even have thought. Yeah. The Dutch even go further back than yeah, that. Yeah, 1600s. Yeah. All right. And it's from Diedrich Knickerbocker, the name under which Washington Irving published his popular history, History of New York. Okay. I'm All right. feeling a little Washington, headless here. Washington, Washington Irving used the pen name Diedrich Knickerbocker. Hmm. All right. Okay. You know where he got the name from? The Dutch. <laughs> his next door neighbor. <laughs> His next door neighbor, <laughs> his next door neighbor's name is Herman Knickerbocker. Good job, Herman. All right. Now I thought it was all about the pants and the knickers. Right. Okay. Right. And that's what the war and the Dutch war and it, you know and the plus twos and the plus fours and and like you were saying yeah. and the knickers we wore playing baseball. Yeah. You know. So I thought it was all about the pants. I knew it was related to the Dutch. Yeah. All right. But I thought it was all about the pants. All right. Hmm. And here's. Here's the really, really funny thing, all right? Uh, it literally translates to toy marble baker. I guess bacher means baker. Okay, that all makes right? sense, but I'm and still I guess trying Nick, to... Knicker is a toy marble, all right? So is that and, why underwear were called and, knickers? And, and a German... Your balls? <laughs> See, now we have, we have our answer. <laughs> in German, in German, the slang knicker, knicker... Uh, for marble, it's a schoolboy is for marble. So for a schoolboy, it's 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 a marble right. uh, in German. There were Aggies, so, there were shooters, there were cat's eyes. Yeah, I never Bum called my bummies. I, yeah, I never called my my marbles knickers. No, I didn't either. Yeah, but I wasn't from New York. You guys have your own language up yeah, there. Well, yes, we do. You have your own language up there. All right, so that is mine. I I learned a lot. You know, because I was like, okay, because New York is sometimes called the Knickerbocker State because it was it was the Dutch that kind of right. got everything going. So well, I didn't you know, know if you ever knew it was called that. No, but it was very interesting to know that that Washington Irving used that as a pen name. Mm -hmm. So I, I find that very interesting. Yeah, so, so that's yeah. where it came from. 1831, yeah. Yeah. history in New York was Washington Irving used that name to write the history of New York. That's interesting. Okay. So good old Washington Irving and his Ichabod Crane. Yeah. Well, you know, so we are talking about today's topic is nicknames of the 50 states. So my word origin is nickname. 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 So basically, a nickname is a usually descriptive name given instead or in addition to the one that belongs to the person, place, or thing. Now, nickname itself goes back to Middle English, um, and it was Iki, Iki name. Iki name, and it went Iki, to Nikki? Iki, Iki name. Okay. And then, you know, now we're getting technical here, because um, the nickname comes from meta, meta analysis. Meta, 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 uh, you got to decide how you're going to phrase this, but it's meta-analysis. Okay. And that is... Um, Words that become, it, it's not just, a, it's just not a compound word, but words that become easy to pronounce because of it. So it was icky name, E-K-E-N-A-M-E, -E -E, um, and icky meant um, also, also name, and uh, also or in addition was E-K-E, -E, used in Middle English. Okay. But it went out of vogue. So um, they just changed it to nickname for the alliteration and the easy of pronouncing it, and it still means the same thing. So it's, it, it, Nick just became compatible with uh, name, and that's how the words sound together. So that's where we got nickname from. All right. Yeah. So um, did you have any nicknames growing up? No, not too many. I mean, I did in the fraternity. I got a couple of different ones in, in college, but, you know, so... I mean, what, what was the nickname that stuck the most? Well, I've got a, a, a dear and wonderful friend of mine who will call me Scrambly, but, you know. Scrambly, what is Scrambly for? 
Yeah. Just he just he just it worked, you know. He, he couldn't talk that night and just, <laughs> yeah, just well well considering his nickname is Crust, yeah, it kind of worked out that way. So, crust, yeah, yeah, not crusty like Crusty the Clown. Well, that's where it started from, but oh, yeah, okay. but it but it morphed down to Crust, yeah. So okay. that was it. Right. Um, Amanda, do you have any nicknames growing up? Amanda Panda. Amanda Panda. Amanda Panda. Yep. Yeah, I never, I never ended up getting nicknames or anything. Yeah. But you know, it it was weird. You know, I was one of those people in in junior high school, high school, and in college that Amanda, um, are you doing what's on the screen right now? What? I got to show you. We are at uh -oh. like look look at the speed we're at. Oh, so that wow. happened to me yesterday when I was or Ooh. on Tuesday when I was on the show with Davey. It Davey. literally looks like the show's at the wrong speed. I'm yeah. a little over caffeinated my, here, apparently. So sometimes, like it did it to my phone when I was on live with Davey. So I don't know what the deal is, okay. but I've got it normal on mine. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out and come back in. But um, <laughs> and and in the land, everybody has a nickname, right. and the difference in generations today compared to what they used to be is when I was growing up, your nickname was whatever your closest or worst affliction was. All right. I was an extremely small guy. I'm not a big guy now, but I was extremely like, I didn't grow until like I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And my dad's like five foot four. My mom's like five foot. And my sister's like even shorter than that. <laughs> she, she doesn't break okay. five. So I'm a giant. I'm, I, I made it to like five, eight and a quarter. All right. I'm less than that now. Um, but mm -mm. I was extremely small, so uh, my nickname was Troy Boy. Okay. All right, I was called Troy Boy, and if, and if I go back to the land, I'm still Troy Boy Blevins. Like, and they said they used to say the whole name. So when I broke right. when I broke right. the baseball hits record in the land, you know, baseball was a big deal in the land. Yeah. I broke I broke the hits, hits record in high school. They didn't write Troy Blevins. They wrote Troy Boy Blevins. Breaks okay. the hits record. So when I get to college. Still a small guy, you know. Definitely at that level of athlete, I'm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was five eight and weighed like hundred, maybe one hundred thirty nine pounds, maybe wow. one hundred forty pounds. Could you hit it out of the infield? Oh yeah, yeah. But I could run like <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I could run, and uh, my nickname became Killer. At that <laughs> Well, that's a transition for you, isn't so, it? Oh, so I goodness. went from Troy Boy. <laughs> I, think, I think we just lost Amanda to Killer. <laughs> Within a month, <laughs> when they ordered shirts and jackets for it, and I still have the jacket today, That's it says funny. Troy Killer Blevins on my Seminole jacket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it was given to me by um, Leonard Thigpen, uh, okay. Bobby Bobby Thigpen's Bobby's brother, brother yeah. his younger brother, and it was given to him, and Bobby's six four six five, and you know probably weighed two twenty five, just built. You know, and him and I would wrestle, and we, you know, and, and I would lose. Right. Um, and he would pick you up and put you wherever but, he wanted but you to be. How I got my hernia, my first hernia, oh, was, was body slamming Leonard. I had him <laughs> up in there and body slamming him playing at Florida State. And, you know, but it was just one of those things, you know, how you call a Chihuahua killer? Yeah. That's how I got. <laughs> right, that's okay. how I got the okay, name. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. you know, I tried to tell people it was because I was a lady killer, but mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was because it was more of a Chihuahua thing. Yeah, just show them the notches on your belt. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it was it was. Uh, so as far as nicknames go, I didn't yeah. get blessed with the best ones. Yeah. There was a lot worse ones out there, but I didn't get blessed with the best ones. Yeah. No. All I'm... right. So which state do you want to start off with? Yours is yours is New York, correct? And it's which is the Empire State. Correct. Which, by the way, goes back to George Washington, should you know. Yeah. Okay. So um, New York State goes back to, it was, it was George Washington. In 1785, he sent a letter um, to the whatever council was in New York at the time. And um, he said, you know, the resilience in New York State's participation in the Revolutionary War made it the seat of the empire and that's where the empire state came from okay from george washington back into into 1785 it's been kicking around that long wow yeah yeah all right nothing uh, to do with that big old building on 34th street there's the, well that big building kind of is a symbol of new york right I so mean, the it, empire it state is. building yeah. was uh, named after a george washington quote <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's where right. they got it from yeah um all right there are four other 
nicknames of the nickname. That's their official nickname Correct. is the Empire State. Yeah. Do you think you can? Well, you know Nick Knickerbocker's one of them, right? So there's um, three other left. Do you think either one of you can come up with one of their other nicknames? Well, there's the classic. Well, one would be the center of the universe. <laughs> That's only from people in, actually in New York. No one else calls them it's that. It's the Big well, Apple, should. baby. It, that's, the that's Big it. Apple's right. one of them. And again, that's just the city, not the state. But yes, yeah. 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 Same, same idea. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't think of that for the state, but I would All certainly right. think of that for New York I've City. I've never heard this one before. The Excelsior yeah. State. I've yeah. never heard it called they that. They had them on some license plates when I lived there. All right. Yes, exactly. And it's this the newest one, license plate. This one I really don't get, and it, it was on, and one of the things I saw, is Gateway to the West. Really? So I guess if you're, coming, Jersey? if you're coming through Europe, there was a, is, that, is that what it is? There was a time when Jersey was the frontier. Exactly. Yeah, but it's like that New Yorker cover. With, yeah, you know, yeah. But, but I mean, I was thinking it might have been more with Ellis Island. You kind of well, came that would in, be yeah. gateway to America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering if the, that's what that was a takeoff okay. of. But I've never heard it called that in, except in this one. Well, so. you tasked me with um, expanding on the concept of Excelsior. We were talking about that Tuesday at Trivia. Mm -hmm. Excelsior is the New York State motto. And that's morphed over the course of time, too, because originally it was Excelsior cum dignate, mm -hmm. which is ever upward with dignity, because Excelsior means ever upward. Mm -hmm. So originally the New York State motto was ever upward with dignity. And um, it started in 1880, 1854, but it came from an 1841 poem by a guy by the name of Henry Livingston Jr., wrote a poem called Excelsior. Okay. Which is sort of sad in its in its comeuppance because it was about a young man, the poem is about a young man who against wisdom and advice from more sagacious people climbs up a mountain. Mm -hmm. And the kid, you know, fortitude notwithstanding, gets to the top. Mm -hmm. Where he then proceeds to die amongst the snow and the rocks and he's done. Um, so it's, it, 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 it's part of his perseverance, um, but, you know, he should have listened to people that have been there and done that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So then... Um, in 1854, and I love this name, Hamilton Fish, um, Governor of New York, Hamilton Fish, used the phrase. I loved him on Barney Miller. Wasn't that great? Yeah. yeah. Um, you said that wasn't Hamilton. That was just, but it should have been. <laughs> yeah. But there was another character, Hamilton, Hamilton Fish, and I don't know if that was in Ally McBeal or where, um, but there was somebody else, and um, he used it um, the phrase to work on reforming New York State government when he was governor, and then by 1882. Um, the coat of arms um, was shortened. Short. The coat of arms was made um, with you got the shield with the two wings with justice, mm -hmm. um, and um, they, they they just got it. <laughs> it makes sense for New York. So um, in retrospect, it made good sense. They got rid of with dignity and they yeah, just, yeah. just ever upward. They They're didn't like, care nope, about digni it. dignity. Was out. They just shortened to do Excelsior and they didn't worry about with dignity. Unfortunately, so yeah. So, uh, Amanda, where were you born? What what state were you born in? Florida. You were born in Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're a sunshine. You were born in New York. I'm assuming. I was. Okay, right there. What 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 states have you lived in? I've lived in Florida, North Carolina, and New York. Florida, okay. North Carolina, and New York. Well, we did New York. Okay. We can do Florida, let's, but let's North Carolina. Let's do North Carolina. Okay. I think Bobby. Bobby. Uh, Bobby wants North Carolina would, too. Would want us to do North Carolina. Okay, the Tar Heel All State. Right. Yeah. So the Tar Heel State. Yep. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out some other ones that have been associated with North, with Carolina. North Carolina before it became the Tar Heel State. All right. All right. Old North State. Okay, okay, it's a little vague, but go ahead. Turpentine State. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes good sense, exactly. Yes. First in flight. Completely yep. makes sense. Okay. First in freedom. That's interesting. Okay, okay. there's a couple of them that, that dance around that freedom stuff. All right, going back to the Wright Brothers, I'm assuming. Land of the Sky. Okay, I think the West would have argument Montana about that. Montana has something to say about that. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. saying, yeah, yeah, but big I mean, sky. But big I, sky. that's why I'm saying the Wright Brothers, I mean, there's, there's nice... Yeah. Mountains there, but they're nowhere near what's right. out west. Exactly. So but they didn't know that at the time. <laughs> I'm assuming I'm assuming that's from the Wright brothers. Yeah. Well, All right. And this one I've never heard, but I get it. Rip Van Winkle State. What is? Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. We st <laughs> we started out with with Washington Irving and his neighbor whose name he stole. <laughs> Nickelbacker. Did, yeah, that's that's the Adir that's the Adirondacks, man. That's yeah. the Catskills. That's yeah. not that's not nothing there. All right. Okay, but here's the deal. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned turpentine. Yeah. So um, part of the reason it became the Tar Heel State was from 1720 to 1870. 
um, all sorts of naval products. And I, I don't mean belly button. I mean for, for boats and stuff. <laughs> yeah, to seal uh, up the boat. Turpentine, tar, rosin, and uh, there was one more that I can't read my own. Oh, I can read my hand, right? I just got to find out where it is. Turpentine, rosin, um, tar, and pitch for boats were there. Mm -hmm. But during the Civil War, General Robert E. Lee mm -hmm. um, was the person who was calling them the Tar Heel Boys. Mm -hmm. And that's where that might have come from as well. Yeah. Robert, yeah. Robert E. Lee. I didn't have anything for Robert E. Lee, but that completely makes sense. Yeah. Um, you I've know, got one for North Carolina. Huh? Yeah. I've got one for North Carolina. You do? Okay. Okay, let's hear yeah. it. Yeah. So in coming out of the Great Depression, um, North Carolina's tourism industry, where they were trying to look for some kind of slogan to bring okay. people back. We need some tourism dollars. And they came up with Variety Vacation Land. And their whole idea was, okay. we've got a, a spot for you in North Carolina to vacation every month of the year. Okay. There's a part of North Carolina that's beautiful every month of the year. That so it was sense. actually a very um, successful campaign, and it led to a huge increase in tourism and tourism dollars in the late 1930s coming into North Carolina. So it's the variety vacation land. You know, they really missed the boat because it should have been, smoke them, we got them. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, you know. But but then they also turned that around to be the you know the medical triangle and and, and um, the Raleigh Durham and there's got to be a third leg to that triangle yeah. um, is just a great place of innovation and education too. So all right, what's the third leg now? Winston Salem. Winston yeah, maybe yeah. Salem. yeah. Winston Salem. Yeah. Which by the way, smoke them if you get them. Yeah. We, oh, we, yeah. we got Winston's. We got Salem's. You yeah. want menthol? You want? You don't want menthol? Yeah. We got you covered. But when you say Salem, then you start thinking witches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, burn them, baby. All right. And they were not witches. They were just they were just sensitive women who, you know. They just and a dude. And a dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be a warlock. Yeah. Well, he, there was one man executed in the witch trials. I think there were some animals that were mm. also executed. Yeah, probably. Yeah, the cats yeah. primarily. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think there was also animals that were executed. Yeah. All right. Here's and that was, uh, hang on just one second. Yeah. And that was a no-win freaking situation. Yeah. Because, you know, all right, so we'll, we'll. Cover you with rocks, and we'll put you in a in a in a in a, in a lake or a pond or a pool. And if you or float, well, you're a witch. They didn't even do and rocks. If you don't, yeah. yeah, they're just if you could float, then you were a witch. A and if you sank, swim at that then time. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you could swim, they thought you were a witch. Yeah. So you they didn't even weigh you, you down. Burn. Yeah, yeah. Better yeah. to drown. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe less well, screaming. With, What's it? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. With much. as heavy as the dresses were, then it was hard for women to float. Yeah. yeah. And so they didn't think that women would be able to. Hence yeah. the reason if you fall off a boat. Drop your sneakers and lose your jeans, and then tie the ends of your jeans to make a flotation yeah. device. Depends on the, yeah. uh, the temperature of the water, because <laughs> hypothermia can kill you before before yeah. you you, uh, you can exhaust, really yeah. get exhausted. Mm -hmm. So the temperature of the water actually has a huge effect on that. But yeah, you can make a flotation tying your jeans, right. pulling it over your and head, and, and nowadays you can't. Young women, I'm telling you right now. Jeans. <laughs> no, no, again, and, and, and this is, I won't go off on this rant too terribly much, <laughs> but again, you know, I see women, girls walking down the street, and from the top of their knee to their mid-thigh, their, sh oh, their jeans catch are it. ripped all open. All holes. Yeah. Oh, it's just god-awful. <laughs> uh, you know, they buy them that way. I, for a lot of money. They buy them it that makes way. no sense. This is, you know, hobos, ragtag, you know, what are you trying to do? Look like a, look like you were impoverished? Look like you sleep on the street? I don't understand it. There's no, they I'm breathe. sorry, I don't understand fashion. I'm not a fashionable individual, but that's just I can dumb tell you to me. My, com my most comfortable jeans have holes in them. That's fine. But they, they but, earn, they, but, but you earn them. They earn those correct, holes in those jeans. Correct, correct. All right, we're going we're gonna to move on to, here's, <laughs> here's one. Um, <laughs> Connecticut, it's official Nickname the Constitution State is the Constitution State correct? It's also called the Nutmeg. Makes no sense to me. State. All right. I wanted to know why we talked about nutmeg today and people uh, grinding up and snorting nutmeg and as a hallucinogen. Kids okay. Are, kids are doing that. All right. But nutmeg's not grown in Connecticut. I understand that. So I was like, why is it called the Nutmeg State? And here's the reason why. Uh, because of seafaring histories and prominence in the nutmeg trade. So it came through. From the Spice Islands. From the Spice Islands. Mm -hmm. The nutmeg was extremely valuable in the 18th and 19th century America and Europe. Connecticut Yankee traders would sell 
actual wood nutmegs carved to look right. real in order to trick buyers. <laughs> this led to the nutmeg state nickname, even though they never ever grew nutmeg in Connecticut. So they embraced the name from mm -hmm. Bilkin Bilkin people. Yes. It, well, okay. I mean, just the same as uh, uh, you know the story of the song Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah. All right. You know, you know the story of Yankee Doodle. Well, Dandy. it was an insult. I learned right. that here on Bollocks. All right. <laughs> um, the story of Yankee Doodle Dandy yeah. is uh, big hunk and pufta. Yeah. Can you say yeah. that? Can you say you that? Can, you can say that. Okay. You can't hear. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. stick a feather in his hat and call him Macaroni. Yeah. Macaroni was a gay bar in London. <laughs> All right. The Americans didn't know that. So right. they were like, oh, that song's cool. Right. Mm -hmm. And we get pasta. It, it, it's, it's cool, macaroni. In second grade, they didn't tell us that. No, no. they never told <laughs> no. us that at I, all. I told you, Amanda, I learned that on yeah. Bollocks like a year ago. And, and, and so when the Yankees actually heard it, they're like, that's cool. We're going to go with that. And then they totally embraced it. And then it made the, uh, the Brits even matter. So, it, it, you know, right. so it's still, uh, right. still a song that we all know today. And it was supposed to be the Brits trying to be snarky yeah. to the Americans. You know, coming back to nutmeg for just one second, um, you know that nutmeg and mace are the same nut? Okay. That makes sense. When you, when you get a nutmeg, mm -hmm. you know, you take out the outer shell of it, mm -hmm. and then there's this sci-fi looking, alien looking, red waxy thing around it that's sort of... You know, it's not solid. It's it, it looks like it would be in a horror movie type of thing. And then you've got the seed in it. And the, the seed is what you would grate for nutmeg, mm -hmm. but the red waxy thing is the mace. Okay. And that's another pie spice. Woo! Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty wild when you see them. Yeah. Really, it looks like it looks like somebody decided to um, take the top of a maker's mark bottle. Yeah. And, 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 and I was put, thinking bluebell cheeses. Those little bomb, bomb red bell, cheeses. Yeah, yeah, baby, baby, yeah, yeah. Baby bells. Yeah. yeah baby yep. Bells. Yep. All right, I'm going to run through our sponsors real quick. Um, Coquina Coast Realty, give me a call, 904-669-7901. Commercial, residential, you want to do development, you're thinking about selling property, land, anything, uh, give me a call. I'll kind of help you get through the process. I might not be the guy to help you. I'll get, get you a hold of somebody who's better at that field if I need to. All right, Kaiser's Deli and Market. Don't forget the market part of that. He's Absolutely. got great local products in there. Get in there, see Kurt, tell him we sent you. Um, just a great sandwich. Enjoy your time in there. Uh, just a com comfortable place to have lunch. Uh, stop in and see him. All right, St. Augustine Pirate Museum. Like I said, I consider this the most underrated museum in town. Uh, so happy the Croce family brought it up from Key West. Uh, so many fun things to do in there. Um, you know, go through, walk into, and feel the full experience of uh, the boat and the interactive. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, don't yeah. don't not do that because right. you, because you you'll miss out. It's a great experience. A Bear Kresge and Associates. The experience no one wants to handle, but these guys handle it with professionalism and save you money. And that's your taxes. A Bear Kresge and Associates. Give them a call. Me Hands Irish Pub. Three bars in one. You got Johnny's Oyster Bar in the backyard and the pub downstairs. Amazing food. Amazing people. Stop in. Um, and look at the know. bighorn sheep in the phone booth. Big horn sheep in the phone booth. Big horn yes. sheep in the phone booth, and and I still, I need to confirm this, but to the best of my um, knowledge, Teddy Roosevelt apparently was one of the hunters who shot that big horn sheep, hmm. and I believe, and this may be you know an urban legend, or I may be completely off base, but somewhere in the archive at the Historical Society, there's a photograph with him holding one horn and somebody holding the other horn of that sheep that's in the in the phone booth at the base of the stairs in me hands. That's so funny. I yeah. need to I need to find that out for fact. Well, Teddy Roosevelt would come and visit Jacksonville, the building that Sweet Pete's is in. Okay, it used to be a gentleman's club, and he would speak there. Um, not in, infrequently. So he was in the area, so maybe. Yeah, Teddy yeah. Roosevelt was one of those guys that did uh, possibly a better job not being president than he oh, did being president shoot, with yeah. what he did with the national parks. Oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And what he and, did and, with everything else. And Maeve, last time we were in Meehan's last week, she's like, there's a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> In the phone booth. Uh, Good for her. I don't she know if it. she knew it was a phone booth, but she's like, there's a sheep right Right, there. she doesn't know what a phone booth yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. There's a sheep in the little room. Right. In, in, in that um, little box. You know, I don't know if either of you have ever been to Sagamore Hill. 
No. Mm-hmm. So you grew up on Long Island and, you know, you got nothing to do or you wanted to do history. You go up to Oyster Bay, Oyster Bay Cove, mm-hmm. and Sagamore Hill was Teddy Roosevelt's home, okay. which is now in the National Register. For, it's a national monument. Um, it's a historic site. It's wonderful. But man, oh, man, if you are a little bit afraid of taxidermy, do not go in there <laughs> because this man hunted and killed a tremendous well, yeah. amount of wildlife, and every single one of them is hanging in that room. You walk in there, there's a giant... Polar bear. Yeah. You want to talk about bearskin rugs? He had a pet badger when he was in the oh, White House. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. So I mean, he had his more, daughter did. Yeah, he had. Yeah. he had more animals. Uh, most, uh, most of those were gifted. Yeah, gifted to him from different sure. different countries. But he had so many animals in there. They had to redo the White House. Well, but, someone gave him a bear, and that's why we have teddy bears. Uh, because they no, gave him a bear. No, cut. no the, sto- the story was. The story Wait. was. Uh-oh. I've been he, lied to. No, he well, he chose not. Maybe to, just slightly misinformed. He chose not to kill a cub on a hunt, mm-hmm. and he saved the cub's life on on the hunt. And when the story got back. Uh, Teddy's bear. Yeah, Teddy's bear. Of course, nobody came, mentions the fact came, that he killed the mother. Came to be. No, he didn't. He didn't do that. <laughs> he didn't do that. Um, no. But that's, sure? that's where it came from. It, yeah. Was it the uh, the Gund Company? What was it? G- G-U-D-D? What's the name of the company that created G U N D? It's something like that. It's, that yeah. created actually the teddy bear. Oh, Gund. Gund, as in gund. like uh, teddy bear. Yeah. yeah, I think it's G U N D. I think yeah, it's, it's the gund. Gund, gund company that caught huh. the story company. that was actually written in the paper, mm-hmm. and then they created the teddy bear from there. I wonder yeah. if they're he, the... sa- he saved the cub, and it made it. Oh, everyone had that oh moment. Yeah. I wonder if they're the guns from the Midwest. G U N D. Yeah. Um, very, very, very philanthropic family. Very wealthy. A um, lot of museums donate to lots and lots of museums, um, but yeah, if you get a chance, if you're in New York and if you can get to Sagamore Hill, first of all, the house is beautiful. The property overlooks um, uh, the Long Island Sound. It's a it's a magnificent place. It really is. It's really a, worth a trip up there. For but it's sure. a lovely mansion of death, you say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> only if only, only if you're an animal. Don't go there yeah. if you're a vegan. Right. Oh, uh, only, right. Exactly. <laughs> only only if you had a skin that was worth something to stuff. No PETA invited. Yep. Um, all right. So. I want to go. I want to go to uh, Utah because Bobby mentioned that okay, I, he's lived in forty-seven states, yeah. of which one of them is Utah. Yeah, which I find very interesting because Utah is the beehive state, and ain't got nothing to do with bumblebees. Yeah, I was going to say, where did that come from? Well, you know, it comes from it's. This is Amanda will appreciate the fact that it's got a biblical reference. All right, because it comes from the land of milk and honey for the Mormons. Okay. Yep. And it's the honey aspect of it. And you, you, you're in Utah. All the state highways, any any state road, the icon is a beehive. Okay. Um, and that whole thing, and it's it's from the land of milk and honey. I don't know why a cow's not involved in it, but it's just a beehive. Mm-hmm. And that was it. And you would think that, you know, your, your knee jerk would be, oh yeah, so bumblebees, which you're not getting a lot of bees floating around in an arid desert. Yeah. Though there's a lot of mountains, there's a lot of forest in Utah. What a gorgeous, gorgeous state too. You can mm-hmm. you can be in, in, in fish, thick, lush forests and then into into red rocks and canyons, Bryce mm-hmm. and Zion. Oh my yeah. goodness. But you know, Cedar City, it's mm-hmm. a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful state. But mm-hmm. I didn't know that. You know, and that's one of the ones I was looking forward to finding out. All right. And the story I have is um the beehive, uh and, and when I was thinking of it, I think of Mormons as being uh they're all about food storage and stuff like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the only food that doesn't spoil mm-hmm. honey is honey. Yeah. Never goes right? away. So I thought it was associated with that. But the story that I got uh, is because of the hard working and industrial of the early pioneers. Okay. So they worked hard like worker bees. So mm-hmm. wouldn't that be the ant state? Uh, I think I, when I think with of the workers, gra- was a grasshopper just rubbing his hands and I, waiting for I, waiting I, waiting for the leftovers. I think the bees work harder than the, the and they definitely produce something more productive. It looks like our Amanda, you're a queen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we just, just do everything for you. Just take yes. it all. Just take it all in. Yeah. But it, it, it came from the early industry and how hard they worked. The Mormon pioneers migrated uh, in the mid, and they labored to build new cities, farms, mm-hmm. communities across the rugged landscape. So I, they had they had and, it associated with the you know, hard work uh-huh. of the bees. But, I mean, all of these – that's one thing I love about word origins. Yeah. There's sometimes three yeah. and four yeah. different – 
areas where it come from and and it's it kind of that makes you go down that tangent and in all appreciation to the the mormons good bad or indifferent and Mm -hmm. leaving the religion aspect out of it man these people were persecuted like uh nobody else in this country for a long time that's why they had to go west. yeah and they they kept going and they kept going they were getting murdered in ohio and they were getting murdered in everywhere they settled they would get murdered it was legal to kill them in missouri in missouri until 1979 right exactly yeah that's that's just it was fully legal to murder a mormon until 1979. Can you imagine trying to bring that as a defense today in a, in a courtroom right? where in 1976? Yeah. Mm. You know? But, Your Honor, he was a Mormon. Case right. dismissed. Oh! <laughs> yeah. So they I mean, had that's... to leave the country. Utah yeah. was out yeah. of the United States at the right. time. Yeah. And Correct. so they the had territory. to leave the country. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Brigham Young lost today, by the way. They got oh. upset. Yeah. You had to bring that up, didn't you? They got upset. Yeah. yeah. By Duquesne. Yeah. Duquesne's. Yeah. Du- the Dukes. The Dukes. Like I said. The Dukes. Bet against me, and you'll make an awful lot of money. All right. Um, <laughs> they lost by four, but, you know, they they closed. Uh, never mind. Yeah. It's just I've not, got a quick one. It's just not good. Okay. What you got? I've got, so Tennessee, everyone knows the volunteer state. Sure. Um, but it has a couple of interesting um, alternative nicknames. The Big Bend State, which refers to the Tennessee River. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hog and Hominy. It's the mother of southwestern statesmen. But the one I thought was interesting was butternut squash state. Really? And you would think, you know, they must have a great harvest of butternut squash. Not so. <laughs> it's because of the tan color of the uniforms worn by the Tennessee soldiers in the American Civil War. Okay. So like, like the nutmeg state, it has nothing to do with reality. It has nothing it's to a, do with reality. Okay. But interesting thing about those soldiers. So um, there's two schools of thought on how Tennessee became the volunteers, the volunteer state. Mm-hmm. Um, and the original one was, where do I got Tennessee over there? Um, in the 1812 Battle of New Orleans, mm-hmm. the Tennessee Volunteers absolutely um, uh, were phenomenal, and they mm-hmm. distinguished themselves dramatically. Mm-hmm. But then you, you, you fast forward to 1840, during the um, Mexican-American War, mm-hmm. United States government asked for 2,600 volunteers. Mm-hmm. 30,000 people from Tennessee showed up. <laughs> Were they wearing orange and white? That horrible uh, orange and white. Apparently, they were wearing butternut, butternut squash squashy color. things. Right, exactly. <laughs> here's so Tennessee's the butternut squash state. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's here's the one you left off from Tennessee. Okay. Mm-hmm. My family's from t- my dad's side of the family's right, from yeah. Tennessee. I did not know it was ever called this. At one point, it was called the Hog State. I said Sweet. Hog and Hominy. Sorry. Hog and Hominy. Guess. Okay. Guess what my family was? Hog farmers. Pig farmers. farmers. Know farmers. That for sure. Yeah. Pig farmers. Absolutely. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Makes, it makes more sense. Largest check my grandfather ever got was when I-75 came through his property. It split his property. All right. Second largest check my grandfather ever got. The hog farm stunk so bad, the drivers on I-75 were complaining. So the federal government, really? federal government wrote him a check every <laughs> year not to have a pig farm. <laughs> Government subsidies. Paid, re- at, paid government, retirement. Papa, government subsidies at their finest. You got a farm? We're going to pay you not to grow anything because that makes a lot of sense. Papa Frank, with that first check, he moved the well inside the house. We had a well inside the house. Mm-hmm. Didn't have to go down to the creek and get it. Didn't have to go outside to get nice. it. Was it still right. a pump? Oh, yeah, it was still a pump. It was in the kitchen. <laughs> it was in the kitchen. Okay. All right. right. It, it indoor was, plumbing. So it was indoor plumbing, <laughs> right? It was, it was no, no. <laughs> It was a, a pot, pot. Indoor, indoor water. All right. So just and just this is in my lifetime. So just so you guys understand. I know, which is fascinating because just, just so you're you not that old. Yeah. So in second grade, despite all those. when my uncle yes. when my uncle Argyle passed away, I remember this. I was like seven, eight years old in second grade, and I remember sleeping and it was snowing outside, looking through the slats of the of the house. Right. I could see the snow through the slats of the house. <laughs> well so you insulated. Know how, you know how cold well, it is well inside insulated. the house. I'm under quilts. I'm oh, pretty geez. comfy at this point. I have to go pee. Oh, no. Yeah. Do you pee through the house? The outside, the, um, the outhouse, outhouse right. is probably 50 paces away. It's not close to the house. You don't ever leave your outhouse no, close to the house. No, because because yeah. you because your your father would have to write a check to you to, and, to and get rid of the smell. <laughs> we're talking. It was in January, so this outhouse said, "You don't dig a, you don't yeah. dig another hole in the, in the Appalachians right. mm-hmm. until the spring." Yeah. yeah. So it was pretty ripe. 
All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I made it about two steps outside the door and just you know let it let it go right there. But I can tell you right now, yellow snow. It was it was everything in my power. Is like. Okay, I'm seven, eight years old. I was like, Dude, how much trouble am I going to get? This went through my head. How much trouble am I going to get if I pee the bed? <laughs> my sister was in bed with me, so I, I, figured, right, it, yeah, I right. figured it was worse for her than it would be for me. <laughs> yeah, but you had somebody to blame it on. Oh, so, no. You know. No, no so, she'd rat you out in a so heartbeat. Never. <laughs> me and my sister are close, but she wouldn't have taken the bullet for that. Because <laughs> it wasn't like you could wash the sheets easily either yeah. in yeah. January. Yeah. You've got a hand yeah. pump in the kitchen. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and uh, you know my, and it was only my grandfather. My I never met my grandmother uh-huh. on my dad's side. She passed away when my dad was like fourteen, mm. so I never got to meet uh, grandma, grandma Win- or Nana Winnie. So, who my sister is actually named after Winona. Okay. So, so yeah, that's why I called my sister Pooh. If you ever hear me, <laughs> if you ever hear me say Pooh, that's my sister. Okay. All right. That means I don't have to go. I, I'm not using the outhouse at that right. point. So, Not looking right. for honey. What other states really caught you, uh, no. and you and you found interesting in there some of the others? A couple that were weird. I got another fast one. What sure, go ahead. Alabama's yellow hammer state. Yeah. Really? The yellow hammer state. It's a woodpecker. Not yeah. referencing male genitalia, but yeah. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Where did you just go, Amanda? <laughs> they got a hammer, man. Yeah. That's a tangent for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it was chosen in 1927. I know, I, know I liked you for a reason. <laughs> um, hard I know what show I'm on. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Here's, uh, staying with Alabama. And, and again, I'm controlling myself, so good for us. Here here were some of the choices they, they had to choose from. In Alabama. In Alabama. Oh, yeah. Heart of Dixie. Yep, that's the one on the license plates, but not. But right. it's never been official. No, never been no. official. The, the official The official nickname is the Yellow Hammer State. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Cotton State. Thank goodness they didn't go with that one. All right. Mississippi All would right. fight them. Yep. Stars fell on Alabama. Yep. And you know where that comes from? Um, I do. What was that? There was a meteor shower in 1833. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that ended up on some license plates, too, in 2002. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Took them a while to figure that one out, though, I guess. <laughs> Wait. People like stars. Let's do this one. <laughs> yep. All right. Chameleon State. Really? Okay, Camellia State. Camellia, uh, not chameleons. Cam- Camilla, Cam- like the Camilla, flower. Camellia. Gotcha, like the plant. State, yeah, like gotcha, the plant, gotcha. like the flower. Gotcha. All right, Lizard State. Hmm. All right, and here's the what? worst one, and I'm so glad this is not the one they went with. Cotton Plantation State. I mean, it's very descriptive. Well, yes. It was, <laughs> a- it was accurate up to a point. Yeah. It says a lot. Accurate up to a point. There are a couple others. Um, you know, there was one that struck me that was just kind of weird. And I found out a couple things. that The Hawkeye State um, was named after Chief Black Hawk. And, that was a, and there's a couple ones that were man- manipulated by two or three people. Okay. Um, you know, the Hawkeye State in 1838, um, 12 years after the, oh, yeah, the last of the Mohicans, Mm-hmm. Um, which is again, which brings us back to which brings us back to Fenimore Cooper and and Cooperstown mm-hmm. and the Finger Lakes up in New York. Um, there was um, they started somebody somebody was reading something and there was this newspaper publisher James Edwards who owned a newspaper called the Iowa Patriot, um, and then he changed the name to the uh, Hawkeye Iowa Patriot after mm-hmm. Chief Hawkeye Chief Black Hawk. Okay. Chief Blackhawk, who was a friend of this newspaper publisher. To not be confused with Black Kettle. Correct. Okay. So it was 12 years after the last of the Mohican in 1838, and eight years before statehood, they were calling themselves the Black Hawk sta- uh, the Hawkeye State. And that was all because of the uh, James Edwards. Okay. And also the Corn State. Now, Illinois had a little bit of a comeuppance. Because they call themselves the Prairie State, and people said, you got to be shitting me. <laughs> yeah. You know, seriously? And, and they got guff from uh, the Dakotas, Nebraska, and Kansas. So the land of Lincoln percolates a little bit better than, yeah. the, the, Hawk, than the Prairie State mm-hmm. there. Okay, did you guys, you guys catch any of my stodium stat the other day about Robert Lincoln? No. No, I missed that one. Okay, so Robert Lincoln is the oldest son of Abraham Lincoln, yeah. mm-hmm. and, and Lincoln had four sons. And he was there at the assassination, yeah. Yeah, and Lincoln Lincoln had four sons. Uh, Robert Lincoln's the only one who lived to adulthood. Right. Um, 
Sorry, uh, Tad. Willie, Tad. Tad died while right. Lincoln yeah. was in, in office. Right. Mm-hmm. Devastated both Lincoln and, uh, Mary, and Mary. And, and, made, crazy, and, and made, crazy lady. Made Mary. Well, that's part of why she was crazy. No, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and Ro- Robert, a lot of seances and yeah. things. Ro- yeah. Robert actually had to institutionalize his mom. His mom, right? yeah. yeah. All right. So Robert actually was Secretary of War. So he was really he, when um, I'm going to get to. It. I got to you got to let me finish the story really quick here. I, I have a short to, attention span, I know, man. Yeah, I know, I know. So <laughs> Robert Robert was supposed to be at the play um, at Ford's Theater. Right. He was fatigued. The war had just ended. He was on the staff for with Grant. Uh, he was he was a captain uh, on on Grant's staff. So he was there uh, at the resignation when Lee at uh, Opton- Appomattox. Appomattox. Yeah. and. Um, but Robert was at the White House, made it over shortly after the shooting. Mm-hmm. So he was at the deathbed when his dad died. Right. First assassination. All right. Second assassination of a president he was at was Garfield's. Hmm. He was Secretary of War. Then, okay. And, and, and he was Secretary of War at that time when, and he was eyewitness to Garfield being shot. Oof. Garfield pretty much died of septus because every doctor stuck their hand in there and tried yeah. to save yeah. him. He should have been. He should have lived through that that wound. All right. Third assassination. He was um, Robert Lincoln. He was at McKinley's. He was at McKinley's assassination. I ain't inviting him to a party. Standing outside the building. All right. He was outside the building at the same function as McKinley. Was he killed inside, or was it McKinley shot on the stairs? Well, he was. I think McKinley was shot outside. I think Garfield. On the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. I thought McKinley, but I may be. I may be mistaken. But but he was shot by. Uh, Ukrainian. Um, it, it was. It well, was, uh, one was a guy's name I can't pronounce. It was a frustrated office seeker who was something with a G. Yeah. Um, Gorgon. It, it was, sounded very Russian in my yeah, mind. Yeah, they were. But Eastern everything, European, everything yeah. with that type of name, we grow up in the seventies and eighties, sounds Russian. <laughs> so uh, you know, you think Red Dawn. Yeah. All right. But he yeah. was. Well, he was at three. He was at three different presidential. Assassination. That's, uh, That's wild. He lived. He lived to be eighty-two years old. The Angela Lansbury of state appointments. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was the president of the Pullman Company. He was Secretary really? of War. He was ambassador uh, to Great Britain uh, under Benjamin Harrison. Yeah. And I mean, so this guy, he was what a career. He was thought about several times for running for president, but he was working at the Pullman Company. He was. You know, a muckety muck there. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was chairman of the board for the Pullman Company up until he died in twenty four or something like that. And the last living direct uh, lineage uh, passed away uh, in seventy five, uh, hmm. nineteen seventy five, from the Lincoln lineage. That's fascinating. But Robert, uh, just Google Robert. His his career that we he's somebody we barely know in yeah. history. I knew and he did everything. I knew he was an adult. Wasn't he the Lincoln. one that helped um, Lee, um, help the assassin, uh, the actor? Who was it? It's Booth. Lee Harvey Booth. Booth. I was going to say Lee Harvey, Lee Harvey Booth. Right. Exactly. Lee Harvey Oswald. Um, Booth. He didn't he help Booth at a train station? No, no. The story story of that was Edwin Edwin Booth the saved brother, yeah. the father yeah. saved. Uh, Robert Kennedy at a train station. Robert Lincoln yeah. and, pull, and pulled him back. Robert <laughs> mm-hmm. Lincoln pulled him, right. Robert Lincoln right. back and saved him. And uh, when he was on the staff at, with Grant, one of the other officers knew Edwin Booth. Now Edwin Booth was super famous, so Robert right. uh, Lincoln knew who he was. Right. All right. And he's like, "Oh my gosh, this is the guy who saved my life." And he told the story of what happened at the train station, and. Edwin Booth's friend uh, wrote him a letter, and General Grant wrote him a letter saying thank you to Edwin. All this stuff happened before the assassination. Yeah. Now, Edwin was um, questioned quite a bit because of what his brother did, right. yeah. but a lot of this stuff, like Grant took up for him, and uh, the staff member took up for Edwin, and it gave Edwin some cover. Mm-hmm. And Edwin actually even went on to do One Man Plays that – Denounced his brother's actions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Ed, Edwin Booth's another one that's very rare. You don't hear anything about mm-hmm. in history. The person who who got famous from John Wilkes Booth was uh, Doctor Mudd. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah. you know, and and well, he ended up saving people um, in prison. What's the little island minute. off of Key West? 
Uh, oh, oh, uh, the dry tortugas. The tortugas. Yeah, yeah dry so that's, tortugas. That's where a pretty, he, he yeah, there's a fort there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the yellow yellow fever went yeah. through there, and he saved so many people, and that's how he he was able to free his name, but. Call yeah. me mud. Never, never was clear. Okay, yeah. so it, it's kind of timely. First of all, to answer the question, Leon Saglov, C Z O L G O S. Sounds Russian. Yeah. Shot, shot uh, McKinley. Okay. Um, and you know now there's a show on Apple. He was doesn't say where he was. <laughs> he, but was he was he was he a, was born in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, but it sounds Russian. Yeah, I know. Um, but there's a show called Manhunt on Apple TV now. Well, to stick with him, didn't he want a job and McKinley wouldn't give him a job or something no, like that? No, that was that was the guy with the G who shot the other guy. Okay. He was the frustrated office seeker. Was Gatou or or something with a? Is that Garfield? Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, and he was he was the frustrated office seeker. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I believe. But the show Manhunt on Apple TV, spoiler alerts notwithstanding, um, the the principle in it is Edwin Stanton. And I find a couple of discrepancies in it. First of all, if you see any pictures of Edwin Stanton, he's got Troy's beard on steroids. It's down mm -hmm. to his freaking belt buckle. Yeah. You know, scraggly thing. The guy's clean shaven in this show. And also, I can't find a living son, Eddie Jr., Edwin Jr., but the character is in the show, mm -hmm. but he had one son who died in infancy, and I can't find another one for him. So I'm a little mm -hmm. confused there. And the thing that fascinates me is is Patton Oswald. If you know who Patton Oswald is, mm -hmm. he he plays the the detective who's on the hunt for Booth, and he's corrupt. <laughs> All right, we got to talk about Minnesota for Minnesota. For Barbara Jean. Barbara That'll Jean. have to be our last one. That is okay. our that is our last one. All right. Now Minnesota had a lot to choose from. I'm going to run down them really quick. You tell me which one they should have went with instead of North Star State, Gopher yeah. State, State of Hockey, Land. Of 10,000 Lakes, which is the one I thought it was. Mm -hmm. uh, bread and Butter State, Bread Basket of the Nation, Cream Pitcher of the Nation, Wheat State, Playground of the Nation, New England of the West. That's so funny. Did I, I mention Wild Rice? No. Shame on them. No. So the North Star State, um, It's uh, the state's motto is... Le Tour de Nord. There you go. Meaning exactly. Star of the North. Yep. This refers to the North Star or Polaris um, and guide early settlers as they trek further north. The North Star, steadfast, reliable, represented the strong work ethic and values of Minnesotians. Minnesota. Minnesota. So, Minnesota. We, got Minnesota. It, we got in Minnesota at the last minute. They should All have right. gone with bread and butter. Bread, yeah, because if, it, if it's a wheat state, I'm presuming it's winter wheat. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Bread and butter. Great show. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Lenny, Amanda. Lenny, Thank you. appreciate it. We, that, was a lot of, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, good stuff. Right. Uh, appreciate everybody participating out there. Please share the show if you liked it. If you didn't like I got it, 50 of share them for the show you. to friends you don't like. All right? <laughs> it, it, right? Just get it out there. We want to make sure you take care of our sponsors. Go see them. Tell them we said hi. Exactly. Mention our name. All right. This is Bollocks Talks and Tangents. We'll see you next week. Well, some of us. Bye-bye. <laughs>